Yo, and welcome back to Let's Play I, the Somnium Files. This is not the correct controller. Okay. So, last time, well, this happened. We went into her bar and talked to her, and then they both got kidnapped and then murdered. Very, very, very violently, might I add. And now we're coming back to the scene of the crime. The cold storage warehouse. Let's talk to this guy. Any progress on the investigation? I checked this place point by point, but didn't find nothing. Hmm. What about you, uh, what was your name again? Oh, I can't. <laughs> Now's not the time. Okay. Uh, hey, Kagami, what's up? No, nothing so far. Cool. Well, we have a blood stain here. Is this Ota's blood? No, this is where um, Iris was, wasn't it? An evidence marker. That's a little marker. <laughs> yeah. Ice cutting machine. Iris and Ota were sliced in two by this ice cutting machine. Iris and Ota. Iris's estimated time of death and Thank cause you. of death have been confirmed. I need to blur that now. The video was not a recording. It was a live stream filmed in real time. Which means Iris's time of death is 3.20 a.m. Can we please stop showing that? Okay. Sorry no one is able to see any of that. Or at least not on YouTube. On Twitch, you guys can see it just fine. Right here. Iris and Ota were. I am sure you are already aware of Ota's time of death. Just before I arrived. About 3.30 in the morning. And the cause of death. Right, about that. Ota had a stab wound from a kitchen knife in his side. Correct. What was the exact cause of death? Was it the knife wound, or...? I cannot determine that. I can conclude that the knife wound was at least close to being fatal. Even if Ota was still alive on the workbench, he was certainly on the verge of death. If he weren't already extremely weak, we would expect to see more signs of struggle. Hmm. A wooden box on the shelf. It's empty. There's a cardboard box on the floor. There is nothing in it. A forklift. I don't see anything special about it. This forklift is old. It does not but that one's old. Functional. Okay. It has not been moved in some time. Huh. Okay. A video camera and laptop. This is what the criminal used to stream. Like I'm doing right now, but I'm... Well, I guess I am streaming a murder in a way, aren't I? All of these items have been bought from pawn shops and thrift stores. It would be difficult to determine a suspect from them. Huh. Well, it was worth a shot. I have logged into the Wi-Fi in this warehouse. Oh. Okiura Fishery Co. Ltd. is listed as the owner. Mm hmm However, I found the password written directly on the router. Anyone who saw it could have used it. Huh. So you don't have to be familiar with this area to use the Wi-Fi. I have done some research. As the name suggests, the company is owned by the Okiuras, the same Okiuras we know. Mm -hmm. Renju's father created the company. Another connection to Renju. No, actually. Currently, Okiura Fishery has nothing to do with Renju. His The company has been managed by office representatives for the past 17 years after Renju's father died. Mm. Renju holds no shares and is not involved in the management. In short, Renju did not inherit the company from his father, and it was instead given to other persons. But it can't be a coincidence. It certainly is suspicious. Hmm. 
Iris also had her left eye removed. Yeah. And like Renju and Shoko, Iris's left eyeball has not been recovered. I can't wait to find all those eyeballs in a jar somewhere. Maybe Oto was trying to help Iris jumping at the criminal. That led to a scuffle and Oto ended up with a knife wound in his side. He lost all his power to fight back. He was forcibly put inside the costume, then finally cut open by the ice cutting machine. But why? Why did the culprit put the costume on Ota? To screw with you? Date, we should get moving. Officers from the local jurisdiction are checking the warehouse thoroughly. We will not find anything of importance here. Huh. Yeah, you're right. You can ask CSI to inform you if they find anything. All right. <coughs> CSI Miami, or... Uh, anyway. I guess that means we're good to go. How do I, how do I go? Oh. Let me know if you find anything. I let them know, then left the warehouse. Sorry, my fiance bought some like Capri Suns, apparently, and that was partaking one. <laughs> so, hmm. When I left the warehouse, I saw Pewter. What is he doing here? He walked up to me while I was trying to work it out. Dante, I have, I have to talk, talk to you about, about something. something. Okay. Huh? About, about the original, the original Cyclops, Cyclops serial killings. Ooh. Why, Why this all of a sudden? Because, because I, want I want you to solve this case, case Mr. Dante. Dante. I, want I want you to you find who did this and bring them to justice. justice. So, if I can, I can help, help you, even a little. Hmm. Why didn't Why you say anything in Abyss? The, the boss was, was there. there. I, couldn't I couldn't speak openly in front of her. So, so I decided to meet you here. All right. Let's hear it. Earlier, story time. I told you that I was completely certain the original Cyclops killer couldn't have committed these crimes. Mm -hmm. I am absolutely certain the original Cyclops killer could not have committed these crimes. It's because I'm standing in front of you. I understand that. Let me explain why. I'll start by telling you the identity of the Cyclops killer. Although, it's more accurate to say, killers. More than one? In the first series of killings, the culprit had an accomplice. One of them was born a murderous psychopath. The other is Rohan Kumakura, the previous chairman of the Kumakuras. They each had a role to play. The murderer committed the homicide, and Rohan removed the eyeball. Oh! I crossed my arms, I'm like, okay. Um, about Rohan. Eighteen years ago, Rohan took a woman's eye. She was already dead. He put his finger into her eye socket and gouged it out. Jesus Christ. The reason why was simple. He was fascinated by women's eyes. Their beauty stimulated his greed and his desire to possess them. He needed to have eyeball in the dark. Okay. Make them his own. Bruh. Driven by this instinctive impulse, he took yeah, the, the woman's eye. We're good. From then on. Oh wait, we're echoing. A grotesque obsession. Okay. With the eyes of dead women. I fixed it. He was very particular about his need that the eye belonged to a deceased woman. But even being the head of a Yakuza gang, there weren't too many opportunities for him to indulge. His deepest, darkest desire went unfulfilled for years. However, he soon met his ideal partner, the aforementioned psychopath. 
the Cyclops killer would commit the murder, and Rohan would take the eye. Thus, a mutually beneficial relationship was established. This was the origin of the Cyclops serial killings. At about the same time, you were assigned to Abyss. Hmm. So it's not me? Who is he? He was born with a brain dysfunction. Due to damage to the posterior pituitary gland, he was unable to properly secrete oxytocin. Oxytocin is a peptide hormone linked to feelings of love, affection, and trust. Huh. It is colloquially referred to as the love hormone. It causes a tranquilizing effect which improves mood and relieves stress. Okay. It is normally secreted when the body makes contact with an object of affection, such as an embrace or caress. I'm sure you know what this implies, but he was unable to feel love in the way that we do. However, he was able to experience a substitute. His brain was wired in such a way that allowed him to feel satisfaction through other means. Killing people. Due to the unique idiosyncrasies of his brain, he was able to release large amounts of dopamine and endorphins hmm. by performing a certain action. What was it? Murder. Murder. Dopamine is a hormone linked to the reward system of the brain. The pleasant feeling attained through accomplishment is dopamine. Mm -hmm. Endorphins are a kind of brain narcotic. They dull pain and create a feeling of happiness. He got pleasure from killing people? It's slightly more complicated than that. Killing people was the only way he could get pleasure. He was hmm. 12 when he took his first life. Gee, that fuck. enlightened him to the pleasure <clears throat> of murder, which he would do again and again. Why did it get classified? That, I don't know. The details of the original Cyclops serial killings case have become nebulous over time. Even the official investigation material contains nothing of value. I am unable to draw any conclusions from them. Hmm. You really have no idea? If I did, I would tell you. Thanks, Peter. The original Cyclops killer had an accomplice. Mm -hmm. There were two Cyclops killers. And one of them was the former chairman of the Kumakuras, Rohan Kumakura. Rohan committed suicide by jumping to his death one year ago. That means... Pewter, tell me this. One of the original killers is dead, I know that. But that means one remains. Who is he? After his fourth murder, he was arrested by the police. They actually picked him up on other charges. But, in any case, he is currently serving a life sentence in Fuchu Prison. <gasps> Fuchu Prison? Number 86. What's his name? 76. In prison, he doesn't have a name. He is simply called number 89. 89. I was called. Number close. 89. I know who killed Shogun Adami. So, now you know why I said that. That the original Cyclops killer couldn't have committed these crimes. Because one is dead. And the other is behind bars. Mm -hmm. Neither of them had the opportunity. That makes sense. We have a field trip to make. Pewter looks grimly serious. Let's go to Fuchu Prison! Except I can't. Well. Uh, time to start delivering some bad news, I guess. Game, why are you making me do this? The Sagan Residence, Monday. When I visited the Sagan household, I found Hitomi with a hollow look in her eyes. She let me in and asked me to sit on the sofa. I agreed and sat down. But after that, I couldn't say a single word. The heavy silence weighed on both of us. 
about Iris. Iris was my everything. We always went everywhere together. Whether it was buying clothes or going to the movies or taking a walk or going shopping at the supermarket. When she was young, she would just hold one of my fingers. Her hand was too small to hold mine. Then it was two, then three. And finally she could hold my hand. But eventually, she left my hands altogether. She started crossing her arms, being independent. Even <laughs> though she needed constant attention growing up. Can you think of anything? Hey, tell me. My entire focus is on this case. Is there anything at all you can tell me? I don't know if this is important, but... No, please. Tell me. I may have told you this already. Mm -hmm. I met Renju's wife Shoko twice before. Mm -hmm. The first time at the wedding. The second time a month ago. That second time was in the waiting room of the prison. What? Prison? There's an acquaintance of mine from when we were younger. Number 89. I visit them a few times a year. And by coincidence, I saw Shoko. I don't think she noticed me, but I recognized her as Renju's wife right away. It's she Beppo, was there for isn't the it? same reason I was to visit one of the inmates. Do you know who? No, I don't. We didn't talk. Which prison? Fuchu Prison. Fuchu. In Tokyo. Mm hmm. Fuchu. Prison? Thank you, Iva? <laughs> um, about Iris again? Her memories are a part of this room. And always will be. When she was a baby, she fell off that sofa and cried and cried. One day, she tore up her picture book all over the floor here. <laughs> Another time, she drew with crayons all over the window. <laughs> she painted my portrait on Mother's Day. Scratches on the floor, chipped plates, bird marks on the table, stains on the cushions. <laughs> Everything you see. It all holds a memory of her. <laughs> but why? Damn, that's some good voice acting. <sighs> okay, um, Ota? Ota was one of my students. I huh. taught him in elementary school. I heard it from the police. Ota tried to help Iris and ended up. I don't know what to say. I have no words. <laughs> I'm sorry to have bothered you. I'll be going now. I don't know what t to do. <laughs> Thinking about her. <laughs> Dante, please, you, you, you have to catch them. Please, <laughs> please. Okay, at times it's a little forced, but definitely gets the point. I will. Trust me. Well, I knew that was going to be pretty rough, and I was correct. <laughs> let's let's just keep that train rolling. <laughs> uh, okay. Matsu ma, Matsu ma, Matsushita. Matsushita Diner. Monday. Hi. The place was silent. It was so quiet I felt like I could hear the floating dust. I stepped, in, I stepped inside. I thought it was empty, but I saw a shadow in the corner of my eye. It was Mayumi. It was like watching a decaying old tree cling pathetically to the earth.
I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, about Ota. Do you want to talk about it? This is your fault. Oh. I heard from the police. Because you didn't take care of Iris, my boy Ota got involved. Date, I looked into the investigation report. Mayumi confirmed Ota's body early this morning. I see. I'm sorry. I want to be alone right now. Did you not hear me? I said leave! <laughs> Date, let's go. Before she, she takes one of those talk. kitchen knives yeah, and stabs right. you with it. Why did we come oh. here? Okay. Um, wait, I just realized we can go to my house. Oh, wait, I just realized who'd be here. <laughs> She's gonna be both mad and upset. Mm. Uh, Date Residence, Monday. Also, it looks pretty shitty. Mizuki is curled up on the sofa. She looked like a small animal frightened by a predator. Hey, Mizuki. Uh, about Iris. Oh god, here we go again. <laughs> about Ota. The warehouse? She made some kind of reaction know. there. About Iris and Ota. Of course. The news was distributed heavily across the internet. Not just in Japan, but worldwide. Hmm. Three days ago, Mizuki discovered her mother's body. Two days ago, her father's. This morning, two of her best friends. It is completely understandable that she is at her mental limit. Sink or no sink? Can I be left alone for a while? Are you okay? Yeah. She certainly didn't seem so. But I can't stay by her side forever. Iba, contact Abyss. See if they can get Mizuki a good counselor. Understood. I stayed with her for a little while, but we didn't speak. Having nothing more to say, I left. Surprised knowing Date, he didn't say something like, I'll get the bastards who did this. You know. It just seems like his kind of thing. Well, let's head to Marble. <clears throat> Marble, Monday. Are you okay, honey? Huh? About last night. Well, at three in the morning, anyway. You know about it? It's on every channel. You have the face of a ghost. Do you want a glass? I don't need a drink. I need information. Do you have anything? Well, let's see. I do have... I suppose you could call it intuition. <laughs> Tell me. Information about the incident. The Kumakuras are involved in this case. Remember what I told you before? That there's a relationship between Ren and the Kumakuras? Shoko also has a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. You know about her dealings with the Kumakuras, right? We do. So basically, two of the victims are linked to the Kumakuras. That must mean they're involved somehow, right? Not two, three. Three? Hmm. Iris? No, not that one. The boy. He came here last night. Ota? Yes, from Matsushita Diner. Wait. He's linked to the Kumakuras as well. What? How? 
How? Have you uh, heard the hold rumor? Hold on, I gotta ban this person. Do, 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 do. Ban. There we go. Much better. Uh, the basic idea is this, eight year I need to log. I was distracted by that. Uh, he's linked to the Kumar Girls as well. Have you heard the Why did I stop hearing her? Have you heard the rumor? Oh, okay. Mama told me a similar story to Aiba's about Sosajima in the Kabasaki district. The basic idea is this. Eight years ago, So sold his land in the Kabasaki district for 30 billion yen. Mm-hmm. Half a year later, an explosion at the chemical plant caused the land prices to drop drastically. So, bought back the land for one billion yen. Almost like he knew beforehand that the accident would happen. Did So blow it up, or conspire to blow it up? No, that wouldn't make sense. So wouldn't gain anything from that. He would end up with 29 billion in cash and one billion in land. It's a net zero. But there's more to the story. The Kumakuras own a handful of real estate companies. They of course look legit, but they're Yakuza fronts. I'll call those real estate companies the KE to keep it simple for you. Okay. The KE followed in So's footsteps. They bought up land in Kabasaki. Okay. Now, back to So. Have you heard of the plans for the casino in Kabasaki? So was the one who came up with it. I was born and raised in Kabasaki. I remember the landscape of my childhood, and I loved it dearly. But look at Kabasaki now. When I see images of the destruction on television, my heart aches like it's being chopped to pieces. But I promise you, I will revive the Kabasaki district at any cost. Casino Town Kabasaki will give new life to the city. Hmm. After that, So moved fast. He submitted the bills he needed to the National Assembly after drumming up support in the right places. The bills passed and it became an official government initiative. Decontamination efforts therefore increased at a rapid pace in the Kabasaki district. Hmm. At the moment, the area is still considered off limits. However, the air in Kabasaki is currently purified to such an extent that it has no negative effect on the human body. If the plan goes smoothly, land prices in Kabasaki are going to skyrocket. And all that land is owned by the KE. And by So himself. The land he bought back for one billion will be worth ten times that soon. He's involved in some shady business. Mm. This is just another rumor, but the chemical plant exploding was no accident. It was done intentionally. By So and the Kumakuras, you mean? But there's no hard evidence of that. It's just gossip. What does this have to do with Ota? Oh, thank you. Uh, what were we talking about again? Ota and the Kumakuras. Oh, right. You know how Matsushita Diner is close to the Kabasaki district? Mm-hmm. The chemical plant explosion made times hard. Foot traffic went down, sales declined. No wonder it closed down. Ota must hold a grudge. Someone caused that explosion. And if it was intentional, oh, he'd hate them even more. That's how I link Ota to the Kumakuras. Hmm. Definitely an interesting theory, though. Thank I don't you, know how Mama. on base it is. I don't know if what you told me will lead to anything, but... Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to waste your time. No, no, it was very helpful. I'm glad I can help, even if it's just a little. Well then, be seeing you. Come back anytime. time. 
Back to headquarters. Okay. Alright. What about the prison? We've heard it come up like three different times now. Police headquarters, Monday, 4.57 p.m. Ooh, we've got times again. I return to boss's office to report. But I didn't see her anywhere. Where did she go? Well, she isn't always here, correct? True. I sat down in my usual seat and decided to wait for boss. Hmm. What are you doing? I thought it would be easier to talk like this. What do we have to talk about? A summary of the investigation, perhaps? What summary? We don't have anything new. That's not true. Huh? I was curious, so I did some research. About number 89. Hmm. Who is number 89? As you know, he is an assassin with multiple confirmed kills. He is currently serving a sentence at Fuchu Prison. He was in prison Grammar, six please. years ago. That's what Pewter told us. Mm -hmm. After his fourth murder, he was arrested by the police. What's his real name? Unknown. Uh, you don't know? No such person is listed in the family registry. It is possible he is a foreigner, but his nationality is unknown. However, I believe it is safe to say that he was born and raised in Japan. Hmm. Wonder why. Um, what's the relationship between him and Shoko? Unknown. I cannot determine if they have any connection. Approximately one month ago, Hitomi Sagan witnessed Shoko in Fuchu Prison's waiting room. I am unable to say for certain that the person she was there to visit was number 89. After all, Fuchu Prison houses 2,000 inmates. But number 89 knew Shoko's name. I know who killed Shoko Nadami. Hmm. That must mean that he knew her somehow. It is possible. The new Cyclops serial killings? Pewter claims that there were two culprits behind the original serial killings. One was the former chairman of the Kumakuras, Rohan Kumakura. But Rohan committed suicide last year. That leaves one culprit still alive, number 89. But number 89 couldn't possibly have committed these crimes. He was in jail when each of the murders occurred. Correct. However, I do not believe it is accurate to claim that he had nothing to do with the incident. I know who killed Shogun Adami. If he was telling the truth, his involvement is possible. Let's talk to him. Let's talk to number 89. I don't know if he's telling the truth or if he's full of it. But he's our last remaining loose end. Alright. However, we need not go to him. Hmm? We can bring him to us. Hmm? If we plan on sinking with him, it would be more efficient. Can you arrange that? I can. We can do a remote sync. After cutting through some red tape, number 89 was to be brought to HQ. Oh, uh, damn. Okay, that moved fast. He took considerable time to arrive. But for some reason, boss never showed up. Uh, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Police headquarters, 8.56 p.m. Same day. I thought that was a beard for a second, and I was very confused.
This guy looks familiar. Sorry to interrupt your busy day, but I need you to tell me something. I'd appreciate your cooperation. Uh, what's your name? Number 89. Your real name. I don't remember. Hmm. Uh, where are you from? Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso is a republic in West Africa. Population 17 million. I don't have time for your jokes. Uh, you're the original Cyclops killer, aren't you? That's right. I was one of the culprits behind the case six years ago. This one of the two familiar. Cyclops killers. But I don't want to look it up in case it gives me his real name. Do you know Shoko Dandami? Yeah, I guess I do. About a month ago, Shoko visited Fuchu Prison. Was she there to see you? That's right. What did you talk hmm. about? Nothing special. You're in no position to lie. I'm not lying. She didn't come to hear me talk. Then why did she come? To meet me. Meet you? She probably just wanted to see me. When did you first meet her? A long time ago. I don't remember exactly when. What's your relationship to her? A physical one. Oh. I'm kidding. She was just a business partner. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, what? Who killed her? All right. Let's get right down to it. Two days ago, you called Investigation HQ and said, I know who killed Shoko Nadami. That's right. Who? Hey, don't be so hasty. We haven't agreed on a deal. You're going to let me out of prison, right? It's done. You've got a deal. All right, but to explain it properly, I need to tell you a story. It might take some time. Is that all right with you? I've got nothing but time. Then let's get started. The story of a lonely assassin. Him. It's his story. All right, uh, story time for realsies. <laughs> Just Once gonna upon sit a time, on back. There was a detective full of righteous justice. Let's call him F. F found the evils of the world intolerable. F had no parents, no siblings, and grew up in an orphanage since he was born. He suffered every kind of abuse imaginable there. It led him to despise all the evils of the world. Hmm. One day, F was chasing a thug down at the harbor. Someone wanted for the assault and murder of women. Okay, I get it. I'll just throw down my knife. Here. And you lower your gun. It's fine. I got nothing else on me. I'll go quietly. You know, I have a history with hospitals. I've been going to a special hospital for a while. Even if I get caught, it's all good. I'll come right back out again. What should I do next time? Just thinking about it gets me excited. That was the whole clip and then some, I think. The culprit was unarmed, but F never served a day in prison. The case went to trial for some time, but it was determined to be self-defense, and he was declared innocent. If the truth got out, it would be a huge scandal for the police. People at the upper level were terrified of what might happen, so they had evidence fabricated. F wasn't suspended or disciplined at all. After a while, he returned to his job like nothing happened. That was a turning point for him. 
He was ready to shed the morality that was weighing him down, holding him back. F still wanted justice, and he was willing to dispense it to the immoral one by one. He became an assassin, a lone gunman, no agent, no employer. He was his own man. F believed that he was judge, jury, and executioner, but it didn't last long. One day, F got rid of a criminal we'll call X. X was responsible for defrauding and killing an innocent old man for his life insurance policy. Turns out, X had connections. Someone wasn't happy that he died. Rohan Kumakura, chairman of the Kumakuras. X was a top executive of the Kumakuras at the time. Rohan ordered his men to find and kidnap F. I've done some research. I know you've cleaned up at least 18 pieces of scum from this earth. But somehow there hasn't been a single criminal investigation. They're all treated as suicides, accidents, or natural causes. Amazing work. I'm impressed. How about you work for us? Of course, you have the right to say no. But it'll be the last word out of your mouth. F was trapped. Even if he somehow survived, he would be looking over his shoulder for the rest of his life. He had no choice but to take Rohan's offer. Thus, F's self-employment came to an end. He became a hired gun of the Kumakuras. Rohan even gave him a code name, Falco. Named for the falcon, a bird of prey. Falco didn't quit his job as a police officer, though. He worked as a detective by day, assassin by night at the will of the organization. An ordinary killer would need motive to take a life, but not Falco. He did as he was told, one target after another. It didn't take long to destroy his heart completely. Time passed, and a few years back, Falco, who by this time was exhausted in body and spirit, made a fatal mistake. He missed his mark and ended up taking a bullet to the stomach. Somehow, he managed to escape. After reaching a nearby shrine, his legs finally gave out under him. He had no strength left. He put his back up against the shrine and let out a moaning breath that he thought might be his last. Hmm. But at that moment... In his darkening vision, he saw a woman approach him. He watched her take out her phone and dial for help. At the same time, he heard footsteps. Footsteps of at least two people closing in. He knew immediately that they were after him. He sprung into action, grabbing the woman and pulling her close, kissing her to keep her from talking. That was the first encounter between Falco and the woman. She was a teacher at some school. It was like she was from a totally different world than him. Well, Listening to her talk, he would forget everything about his line of work. She was his only contact with the ordinary, mundane world. They met in secret a few more times, and Falco felt his heart grow warmer. Her smile and kindness were like a cold glass of water for Falco's parched heart. Falco started to become himself again, his former self. 
He swore on his life that from then on, he would live for her. So, you wanna go clean? Fine. Do as you please. You've done a lot for us. But, there is one last thing. One final job I want you to do for me. It's nothing major. This woman and her daughter. I need you to dispose of them. Should be simple, no? Rohan handed Falco a picture of a woman and a girl. It was the teacher Falco met at the shrine. And her daughter. She had just turned 12. Why the two of them? Rohan, as usual, never gave a reason. And Falco had no intention of carrying out the kill. But if he didn't, he knew that someone else would. He thought long and hard. How is he going to keep them safe and get out of the life of crime? He couldn't find an answer, no matter how hard he thought. He was backed into a corner. So, he decided to call on an old friend for help. And then... Silence. For some reason, he wouldn't open his mouth again. Um... Why'd you stop? Why did you stop? Was that the whole story? Was that the whole story? You mentioned a detective. What's the connection between that and Shoko? Hey, answer me. This is a transaction, remember? Until I get a guarantee that you'll uphold your end of the bargain, I'm not telling you anything else. Oh, he left off at a cliffhanger. Half up front, half later. Motherfucker. <laughs> if you want to hear the rest of my story, you better start the release procedures. Once they've cleared, I'll tell you everything. Date, it is unlikely that number 89 will uphold his promise, even upon release. Pewter. Yes? Start the preparations. For what? What do you think? <laughs> the sink. <laughs> We're just gonna make sure that he upholds his end of the bargain for real. Injected number 89 with the usual dosage. He will not be waking up anytime soon. Are you ready, Agent Date? Yeah. The time limit is six minutes. Yep. I know. Then let's begin. <sighs> Alright, ready to sync up with the serial killer? Because I know I am. Is this going to be just as wild as the last one? Let's find out. I'm going to bet the shrine. Some room. And for some reason... No, not sup. Why are you sleeping on the job? Because I want to, obviously. <clears throat> Why are you getting mad at me? Yeah, this rug feels so good on my skin, yeah. Okay. Why are you suddenly a cat? Playtime's over. Let's begin. And stand up. Is this the Sagan residence? It definitely is. But why? 
Because Number the... Number 89. What were you up to? Woman he was talking about was, you know... What? The green? I do not think I can pass through it. Hmm. Really wants to hide it, huh? Okay, new plan. Somnium scan! Somnium scan? Mental lock number one, phone. Mental lock number two, our face. Mental lock number three, patio window. Mental lock number four, door. Interesting. This appears to correspond to the green thing. Number 89 is hiding in the past. He's covered in a green membrane. I can't get close. Prevent the interference from... Alright, so we have the switch. A winter iris. And not much else. Okay. Let's check a out winter this winter iris. iris. That blooms in the cold. I know, I know. Pick smell. Well, smelling it worked well last time. Let's do it again. It smells like a typical winter iris. What does a typical iris smell like? Elegant and gentle. Can't you just tell me what it smells like? I had to search online for a description, but could not find one. Oh, right. I forgot about that. Okay, that used up 18 seconds. But now I can use the half time on the 30 seconds. I, I don't know if that's what I want to do, but uh, here we are. You can do it. I believe in you. Stop it! You're distracting me! I got one! Oh. Aw, right after I pulled it out, too. Did the green stuff react at all? Yes. Oh. Should I pick it up? Hang up, ignore. Why are, why are these two my only options? Hang it up. What the? The. I fainted. Now it's going to cost us time to ignore it. Interesting. It won't stop ringing. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. It stopped. What was that? I don't know. Hmm, okay. Ignored the phone. I also noticed that this one does not have branching paths. I guess it worked. That did cost us quite a bit of time, though. I can't do anything with that switch, so let's just look at the liquid. There is some kind of liquid pooled on the floor. Jump in, lick, smell. Stick hand in. Well, all of these options are awful. Uh, let's jump in. Jump in, you say. Jump in, Iba. You do not have to shout. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry. I don't know why I listen to you. Agent Date, you've got four minutes. All right. There is some. Um, let's third the time and stick our hand in. 
Oh. Hmm? It is surprisingly deep. But it wouldn't work Did when we tried anything? to jump on it. Interesting. Well, oh, there is something. A cork. Uh. What Interesting. What is this substance? Green tea? It's obviously not green tea. Perhaps it's jelly. It's not jelly. It's kind of jelly. Like, I got a times two again. A book. A book? Thank you. Uh, well, she said something about tearing up the picture book, right? Yeah. Are you sure this will help us uncover number 89's secrets? It might. We're getting closer. The phone's going off it's again. Ringing again. What should I do? As scary as it is, let's try picking it up. All right. Who is this? What the? Okay. So having the phone leave the receiver in any way causes uh, that to happen. I lost consciousness. And now we're about to lose two minutes. <laughs> oof. Big oof. Oh, my hang up. It's just gonna cause that to happen again, so... Yeah. Who was calling? I am curious, but what if they threaten me for money? <clears throat> You're a police officer. Have some backbone. How much time do I even still have left? Ignore the phone again. Okay. I suppose we didn't do anything wrong. At least you didn't faint. Oh, <laughs> ouch. Okay. I'm betting the secret is linked to that phone, too. A book and a pot. And another book. Lots of books. So many books. Oh, hey, this lamp. Um, pot? It's a pot. Steam is rising from it. It appears to be some kind of green curry. Maybe a soybean stew? It might also be boiled green juice. Yeah, like a slime. A turtle ninja could leap out at any moment. <clears throat> okay. Drink, smell, wear, and heat. I guess we could heat it. What's the worst that could happen? It doesn't turn on. Is it broken? See the phone over there? Call the manufacturer. Okay. Do you think they make dream house calls? I do not. Okay. Less than one minute. Hmm. Hurry. Makes it ten seconds. That's actually really useful. Okay. Um instead of drinking that curry, let's go over to the book. A book. Hmm. Might as well tear this one too. I wonder what these books symbolize. I don't know. Maybe he used to oversee a library? Number 89. A librarian. Yeah, totally. Okay. A book. Same thing. Here I go. What happened? Nothing. Okay. Ah, Dante, thirty ceiling seconds. Fan? It's a ceiling fan. Is that like a giant desk fan? 
A desk fan only moves the air immediately around it, whereas a ceiling fan circulates air in an entire room. Huh. Oh, right. Blow on, throw something, headbutt, or hold on. I don't have very much time to do the hold on option, so we're just gonna do on. Blow on it? Ah. Oh. 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 What is that? It's a damn good question. I. Date, what are we going to do? Well, we could always close that curtain. Out of sight, out of mind, right? Number three, close the curtain. Good. That eye. Do you know something about it? Yes. It was kind of cute. What? You are insane. <laughs> hmm? What? That's... Hitomi? Do I want to interact with Hitomi? I can't. No, I can't. Uh, well, this will be the last thing we can do, so let's make a count. It's Hitomi. Talk to her, hug her, touch her, kiss her. Kiss her, huh? Hmm. What? Kiss her. You... Like this? But why? You are like one of my limbs, Iba. Yes. Like an alter ego, an incarnation of me to kiss Hitomi. Jesus yes. fucking Christ. Then it's like me kissing Hitomi, right? No. You sure? Because that was making my heart rate rise. And another part of me, too. Jesus fuck! Could it just be only your heart, please? Can we take this seriously? <laughs> Date, you're out of time. L literally out of time. Um, I guess we could just try one more it's thing. Uh, is there literally anything I can? Oh, my God. Um, hug. Well, I suppose I will try it. She's hard. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Nothing. <sighs> Jesus Christ, Dante. Okay, um, I'm thinking I'm not getting anything out of you, Tommy. Uh, I wanna try and make it to the skull. A skull. I do not see the body. Let's throw it! Would that not be disrespectful to the dead? Dead? You kicked the last one. Calcium. Sorry about this. Whose skull was this? Unknown. I also cannot determine the connection to number 89. Date, there's no time! Shit, this isn't good! Back to the beginning. Because I assume the checkpoint will just leave me... Well, actually, I'm curious. Uh, what does retrying do? Ah, oh, okay. We'll just go from the beginning. Okay. Now that we have an idea of what we're doing... 
Let us. Sup? No, not because. Okay, so we don't have access to the ceiling fan right now, so it's just the iris. A winter. Let's give it a good plucking. Then we'll half time ignore. All right. I have not interacted with the switch whatsoever. There is ten to twenty. Mm. Yeah, it's over twenty. Why not? Agent right, Dante, this times you've two. got five minutes. So then we tear through the book. And that causes the phone to ring again, which we'll half time ignore. And that leaves me with a shit ton more time. Alright. This fan. Uh, I don't really need to force it to do the blow on, and then that happens. And then the eye shows up. The eye has not shown up. Interesting. Um, it's probably because I have to screw around with the pot. It's a. <sighs> Drinking it will probably cause something terrible to happen. Let's try it anyway. What is this anyway? You can tell by tasting it. I would like to know before I put it in my mouth. It's green, right? It's gotta be Gak. Don't say hey, such Yoda. things! I'm the one who has to drink it! What is Gak? Fine. I'll have a sip. Iba? Hey, Iba! As expected, Iba! she fainted. <laughs> Thank you for the delicious soup. What kind of soup was it? Elephant. What did you say? Elephant. Okay. Hold oh, times three. Shit. Fucked up. Fucked up real good. Uh, tear all the books. A book. Because even times three. Actually, what does reading it do since, uh, you know? F became an assassin for the Kumakuras. Rohan himself bestowed F a code name. Whoops. That name is Falco. Falco. All right. <sighs> it gave me a times two anyway. A book. All right, fine. Just go with that. It'll at least cost me a little less time. Oh, yeah, I showed up. You have three minutes, Dante. Boink. Okay. I'll probably restart next time from checkpoint two because uh, it feels kind of obvious that we're about to screw it up again. Uh, let's go over to this book. A book. And as usual, we're gonna rip and tear. A green book. That seems familiar. I do not think there is any relation to this. All right. Guess it's nothing then. Hmm. Throwing the skull did yes. have an effect. It also gave me a times two, so it's not going to be great. But oh, I just wasted one of the things. You have less than two minutes. Hurry. Okay. I now have a times two counter in effect. Wait, there's another book over here. A book. Tear this one. Ah! 
What is this going to accomplish? We're driving number 89 into a corner. By tearing a book. Yeah. I remember how shocked I felt when Mizuki tore up one of the porno mags I was hiding. <laughs> The situation was clearly different. <laughs> Good old Tate. It is progressing us. Less than one minute. Hurry. Let's grab this one. Uh, uh let's make it tef. Who is that? What do I do? Well, every other time I've ignored it. Lock it. We'll set it to 20 seconds and use ignore. No, we fainted. Iba, wake up! body is heavy. Now it's time for... Okay. Let's lock it. Oh. What? Stop right there. Boss? Did she just interrupt the sink, or what? what's happening? Day four, Monday, Kikai. Date, this is a serious matter. Where's boss? Huh? Boss, where is she? I, I don't know. I haven't seen her since about noon. Damn it. Date, listen. Something happened while you were in Samyam. Huh? Please stay calm and listen. So Sejima's body was discovered. What? He was cut into pieces and put inside a vase in his mansion. Damn! It can't be. The housekeeper found him and reported it to the police. And one more thing. So was missing his left eye. You mean the Cyclops killer did it? Probably, yes. What the fuck? What is your next move, Date? We'll deal with So later. Before that, I need to talk to boss. I suggest checking her office. Good idea. Uh, we're gonna discover her dead body in her office. No. No. Oh. Not here. I guess not. Where is she? The Somnium earlier was just like the dream I had three days ago. I noticed that. Slightly different, though. What the hell is going on? What Except that part. going on? Hitomi was shot by Rohan Kumakura? To protect number 89? Is that why her arm is fucked? And there's another thing I can't figure out. Boss. Why was boss there? Because it was a dream? Was it completely random? No, that can't be. 
You can't dream of a face you've never seen. Number 89 must know boss somehow. This is a serious secret. Boss is hiding it. I have to search this room. There must be a clue somewhere. Iba, can you hack this PC? I will try. <laughs> Those fucking hamster wheel animation, though. Unlocked. Logging in. I have recovered some video data. It was uploaded only a few hours ago. A few hours ago. So Sejima. Damn. Why? Why? Boss? This makes no sense. The case remains unsolved. But that's it. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Boss's office locked. Oh, we're doing this shit. Okay, well, that's to be expected by the guy who made Zero Escape. There are still mysteries left unsolved. The real culprit, the incident six years ago, and Date's past. The story's branching points are insomnia. Use the flowchart to jump to a branching point in the Somnium. It may be hidden somewhere in the dream world. Find a new way forward. Locked. Classified. This is luck. To proceed, you must blame if there's more of the story. Okay. Well, as with Zero Escape, uh, let us step back. This will probably be... Uh, no, that's right. I'm not doing that yet. So, um, we'll step back one every time this happens and choose the other path. Until eventually, we get to where we need... Sinking in the vein. Unfortunately, this means we have to go back into Iris's crazy ass thing, so that should be fun. Maybe this time she won't die. That'd be cool. Oh yeah, hold zero. All right. Well, the branching point here is to look between the TV and that blood stain. So let's go over to the blood stain. Huh? What? Oh. Oh, the secrets are like that. Okay. Look at the blood. Look at the blood. What blood? I don't see any freaking blood. What are you talking about, game? Am I supposed to kick the TV instead? A CR. Hit it. Fixing it by hitting it is an old-fashioned approach. Well, this is an old-fashioned object, so. Mouse. Bloody Mouse. Did my game crash? Oh, uh, no. What was that? Just uh, what? A child's drawing of a rat. Iris must have drawn it. It is not yet possible to determine that. Let's continue the investigation. There is much to interact with. 
Well, this definitely became a much, much, much weirder version of the uh, Somnium that I'm used to. Okay. Um, there's a gun and a medicine shelf. A revolver. Is it real? It appears that way. I mean, I guess we could shoot it. I do not see any bullets inside. Just try it. All right, I'll give it a shot. As I thought, this will not work. We need a bullet. Hmm. Mirror. A full body mirror. Look, punch, and talk. Okay. Medicine shelf. I see many objects in the room. Uh, well, I want to investigate that TV. It appears to be a frog, a child's painting. Let's hope it's not dangerous, or you might croak. Boo. Is that supposed to be funny? No, I was just thinking about the meaning of the painting. There does not appear to be a particular meaning. I agree. A shelf. Well, let's investigate the bottle. It might have a bullet in it. That works too, I guess. The explosions appear to have stopped. The explosions made the room change. The shelves again. This is a dangerous dream, but we must continue. So we need to destroy each of the TVs somehow? Okay. I feel like I'm understanding. Alright, so we have the reference book over there, which is insects. We already know that. Um, this TV. An analog TV. I'm kind of curious to know what this will do. Nothing is happening. Okay. Well. I'm glad we figured that one out. The shelves are no longer interactable. That's interesting. Okay. I can't do anything with the gun. The operating table probably doesn't do anything. Okay. An analog. Understood. Okay. What was that? That was creepy. I agree, Iba. I nearly pissed my pants. That's disgusting, Dante. Okay. Uh, well, now I have two forty-second thingies. What am I supposed to tear and stab it? What? An operating. Holy shit! That takes a long time. Unless you do this. Surgery? For whom? Just. Act it out. Act it out? This is not a children's playtime. It might help reproduce a memory. Well, the last time we did this, it didn't do anything, so uh, let's try again. This Somnium does, after all, appear to be operating under I different feel like rules I'm on now. A medical dragon team. Medical. What? <laughs> oh, shit, it worked. Something has spawned. A locker and a bird. Okay. That did not break the mental lock, though. 
odd. Um. Oh, gas canister. Interesting. Uh, we'll screw around with that in a bit. The locker already has a check mark on it. Just a lot. Opening it before made the gun go off. Tear and stab it. We tore. So now we need to stab? How am I gonna fucking stab oh, this TV? Hmm. Let's go back to the gas canister. See what this does. A common gas canister. Open the valve. Hmm. Could be interesting. Let's try it. Uh, it's rusted shut. I cannot open it. If you can't, then... It is meant to be closed? I think so. You have less than two minutes, Date. Hurry. A common... What does that mean? Um, kick it. Ow. Ow, my foot. Are you okay? Uh, it hurts. I might not be able to stand for a while. Don't give up. I believe in you. I believe that you are more of a sadist than you let on. I love the interactions between these two. All right. Um, we're gonna try opening the locker. Fuck it. Just a locker. Uh, I have no reason to use either of those, so we'll just do this. Oh right, 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 right! Close. Knife. If this were the Delta Princess, I would have been stabbed. Why was it booby trapped? If this were the what? <laughs> I do not see anything else inside. Would you like me to examine the knife? Good idea. The knife that flew out of the locker. Throw it, Sabuku. Sabuku? <laughs> or push him. Uh, it does say stab. I didn't say to punch in. It cannot be pushed in any further. Okay. The knife that. You have one minute left. Let's. Throw it. Like this? What? I only threw it lightly. An oil drum, television, and torso. Oh, the torso's back. I think I understand. I'm starting to see the picture. Are you? I do not yet understand it. Solving these somniums is weird. Tore the butterfly, stabbed the bird. Shoot and kill. Okay. Now I've got to get to a bolt. Where? The oil drum's over here. Oil drum? Wait. An oil drum. Hmm. Let's take a look inside. It's censored. What does this mean? Bullets. Bullets! Maybe you can use them in that gun? Do I have to pick them up or nope, I've already got Dante, them. you've okay. got less than thirty seconds. Go, 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 go. A revolver. Let's shoot it. Can we use the bullets we found earlier? 
This could work. I'll try shooting it. Well, we did it. Hmm? Do I need to censor this too? What? What the? What? <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. I'm confused. I'm so incredibly confused right now. You have no idea. Okay. Well, uh we did it. Yay! Also what? I, uh, Sunday, the high. Okay. I'm gonna have to look up what these. What happened during that somnium? I don't know. We saw the whole thing on the monitor. But we're just as confused as you are. <laughs> well, apart from like, the reflection, uh, it was not so strange. Uh, Dreams are developed outside of our conscious will. Mm -hmm. When you sink into Somnium, there is no guarantee of what you will discover. What about the figure? It could have been Iris herself. That is a possibility. The sinker sees the subject's dream from the third person. That means that Iris... She must have met So Sejima somewhere. We did see Congressman Sejima in there. We saw that shadow kiss him, too. Did that happen in reality? Not necessarily. I'm sure you've had dreams of kissing celebrities and porn stars, right? <laughs> the first part, yes, but the second part, no. <laughs> you sure about that? Anyway, you know what I mean. A dream is not made up entirely of memories. It can include things outside of your memory. Like TV or movies. Even if the figure was supposed to be Iris, her smooch insomnium does not necessarily reflect her actions in reality. You can't use the word smooch. Why not? So we don't know if Iris and So are acquainted. That's right, because So is a celebrity of sorts. It's possible she just saw him on TV or online. We were silent for a time. While I was deep in my thoughts, I heard Peter speak. Date, Iris is about to wake up. Got it. I gave my short reply and headed to the sink room next door. To sleep when I wasn't expecting it? You cops are more rough than I thought. You signed a consent form before you came in here, didn't you? You forced me to sign it. Anyway, Iris, <laughs> I have some things I want to ask you. What? Do you know a politician named So Sejima? Yeah, I know his name and face. I've never met him. You haven't? I'm just an internet idol. It's not like I have connections to politicians or anything. How are you feeling? I'm okay. Normal, I guess. Why? Did you do something that would make me sick? 
I just took a peek inside your head is all. Inside my head? You're confusing the poor girl. Uh, hey, about that Nile message? Iris, let me ask one thing. The message Ota sent you on Nile. I'll keep that thing safe. I won't tell anyone about that thing. That's the one. I won't tell anyone about that thing. What is that thing? I don't know. Ota's the one who wrote that. You should ask him. Iba, Ota's phone is still broken, right? But he definitely sent that Nile message. Ota purchased a new phone in Akihabara yesterday. <laughs> With the same number? Yes. Call it. Connected. Hey, it's Konami Date. Where are you? Ota, I know you can hear me. At home. I'm at home. Got it. Wait right there. I'm coming over. Is Tessa still at the police station? Yes. If you want me to talk, release her. Criminal procedure law number 198. Uh. Persons may refuse to heed a summons or leave the supervision of the police at any time unless they are arrested or detained. Tessa isn't a suspect. According to Article 223, this applies to all persons of interest. You haven't issued an arrest warrant for Tessa, right? So if you don't release her right now, you are violating the law. Damn. <sighs> Damn. Do we have a deal? You want my testimony, right? Bring Tessa here, and I promise I'll tell you everything I know. This kid is starting to get on my nerves. Uh, hopefully we don't get stun gunned so, again. What are you going to do? Shit. Uh, hey, let's let's go. Iris, come with me. We're going to Matsushita Diner. Were you talking to Ota? Yeah, telepathically. I have special powers. Anyway, let's go. He's not technically wrong. But he should be. The diner. I've I've given up on saying it. 9.46 p.m. on Sunday. He's still alive. That's Tessa. good. Thank you, Ota. It's thanks to you. That's right. It's not like you can do whatever you want just because you're the police. Maybe not. But you better keep your promise. So. What's that thing? So let's hear it. What is that thing? That thing? Don't play dumb. You sent that message to Iris. Oh, um... Date, will you do me a favor? What? There's a picture on the counter, right? Yeah, and? Date, you're gonna get stunned I again. I want you to take a good look at it. The photo. Yes, the photo. Dante, are you seriously gonna fall for this shit again? <laughs> this time he just hits him with a pan. Okay. Oh, I was awake this time. Hmm. Day four Monday. Yo die. Yo yo die. Go. <laughs> Alright. Did did they steal my car? Oh no. My head is pounding. What time is it? The day has turned over. It is Monday, two fifty AM. Hmm. Slightly been earlier than the last for nearly time. Five hours. Ota got me, didn't he? He did. 
He sure did. He struck you over the head with the walk. Walk. Sorry, oh, it's not a pan. Why How did he dare do I? that? I don't know. But afterward, he ran off with Iris. How do you know? You had lost consciousness, but I was still watching. I recorded video of the incident. Take a look. Ooh. While I'm driving? Tessa, wait. Uh, I'll get the car. You witch! Whoa. You, you stay away from my boy! This is a terrible angle. I have no idea what just happened. She must have whispered something to her. Um. Hi. Yes. Unconscious on the floor. Why didn't you chase them? I'm sorry. You should have jumped out of my eye and ran after them. I couldn't move. The mechanics controlling my ambulatory motion were short-circuited by the blow to your head. <sighs> Don't blame Iris for this. Er, Date, Iva. Boss is calling. Oh, how am I going to report this one? Date, listen. Stay calm, but this is an emergency. Just now, the killer... Well, just watch the video. I sent the address to Iva. <sighs> I wonder if it's going to be the same or if it's going to be different. Nope, it's the same. Oh no, here we go again. Iris. Well, she's going to have to live with one eye, but hopefully she doesn't die this time. But it's Boss who's sending no, that's... that video. The criminal is streaming this live. Iba, the source. Identify. The Okiura Fishery Cold Storage Warehouse, Koto District. Okiura? We've been driving for a bit this time. We need to get to the site, now. Hopefully this time we can get there in time. Time, time, time. That's, that's all. Okay. I kept my foot to the gas the whole time. I could feel the sweat on my palms. The engine raised a high-pitched scream, but I could barely hear it. My heartbeat was panning in my ears, shaking into the car. How much time have I The feeling of time has disappeared. Eventually, the car reached the long bridge, shortly after the image changed. Polar bear. <laughs> that sick bastard. Boop. And then he walks away. She, excuse me. We know it's the boss now. Or is it? Tessa! Hold on! I'll save you! There's literally no way he could have got out of that suit that fast. This is where he gets stabbed. Date, we've almost reached the destination. Ooh. Please, please let me make it in time. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to get ready for a quick time event or something, so let's pick up the controller. Harbor Warehouse District, 3.17 a.m. That's three minutes before she died last time. Uh, I brought my gun with me, right? Oh, good.
You okay? Date. Where did they go? Through the back door. They heard Just us coming. On, Help is on the way. Don't die on me, kid. Don't worry. Iris is alive. She's she's Backup gonna be a bit uh to Date, pursue the culprit. Alright, I'm on it. Gonna have a bit of Univision for the rest of her life, but you know. Better than being cut in half. She can wear a cool eye patch online. That could be her new uh, persona. Police headquarters, Monday, 9.34 a.m. Any traces of the culprit? Still nothing. We also didn't catch the culprit on any of the surveillance cameras. They probably got away through the back alley. While wearing a polar bear costume. Maybe they took it off and threw it in the ocean. If it were filled with something heavy, it would sink to the bottom. Hey, did you kill them? Uh, about Iris and Oto. They were taken to Central Hospital. Oto's surgery went well. He's in treatment now. Well, that's good. He's stable, nothing life-threatening. Iris, though. Is she still in surgery? Yeah. Iris's left eye was forcibly removed. Because the optic nerve is connected to the brain, the surgery will take some time to complete. Hmm. Um, have you contacted their parents? Of course. Hitomi is at the hospital, waiting for the surgery to finish. And Mayumi? She was at the hospital earlier, waiting for Ota to get out. I think she went back home to get some clothes and things for Ota's hospital stay. Hmm. Date, last night, Mayumi left the diner to chase after Iris and Ota. Perhaps she knows something. Yeah, she might. Let's listen to Mayumi's story. At least she'll be a bit more... ...cooperative, we hope? Um, about the Okura oh. fishery. You should ask Iva about that. Yes, I have already done some research. Okiara Fishery is owned by the Okiara we know. Renju's father created the company. Another connection to Renju. No, actually. Currently, Okiara Fishery has nothing to do with Renju. The company has been managed by office representatives for the past 17 years after Renju's father died. Renju holds no shares and is not involved in the management. In short, Renju did not inherit the company from his father, and it was instead given to other persons. So it's a coincidence the criminal chose that location? Unknown. I highly doubt it. About so. So, Sejima? He was in Iris' Somnium yesterday. Right, but Iris says she's never met him. Why not ask So about it? So lives in Azabu, right? I guess I could. If we don't find his remains in the side of a vase. Has CSI found anything at the warehouse? Okay, hello? Okay. It's still ongoing, but they haven't found anything of note yet. Date, Aiba, go to the warehouse again and investigate. You two might be able to find some useful clues. Hi-o. I want to hear from a representative of Okiura Fisher. They're giving statements at HQ right now. I guess the that pool of blood was Oto's. You could just talk to Mizuki. Right. She's part of the Okiura family, too. Oh, speaking of. Hey, boss. Did you end up sending anyone to take care of Mizuki yesterday? Geez, you're finally getting around to asking that? There was a yes, lot happening yesterday. I had one of our new recruits take her. 
She took her back to your house, so Mizuki should still be there. So Mizuki's at home. And I'm fairly certain she's furious with you. After At least she's not broken. Drama, I mean. Well, I should go investigate. All right, boss. I'm going to investigate all this. Got it. We're counting on you. Let's go, Iva. Roger that. All right. The warehouse, the diner, the Sejima residence, Central Hospital, and our house. Uh, well, yeah, let's head over to that cold storage warehouse. The Harbor Warehouse District, Monday. With significantly less blood everywhere. Yay! Two cars. These cars have been parked here since before 3.17 a.m. Mm -hmm. One van and one station wagon. One of these belongs to Ota. Who owns the van? The Matsushita family. It appears as though it was used for transporting ingredients and supplies. That must be my Yumi's then. Wait, uh, I'll get the car. He said car specifically, but I always called my dad's Jeep Otis the car. Were so. Found on the steering wheel and gear shift. Hmm. Okay. Iris's fingerprints were found around the passenger seat. Those were the only prints recently made. Okay. Got it. What about this, this car? Wagon is a stolen car. Hmm. Stolen. Last night, the owner of the vehicle reported it stolen. It was stolen at 10.33 p.m. yesterday. The theft occurred in Fuchu, Tokyo, in the Fuch. parking lot of Famisto, a convenience store along Koshu Highway. The Famisto <coughs> parking lot, huh? The car was stolen while the owner was shopping inside the store. The vehicle's engine was on. The doors might have even been unlocked, which would have made the theft easy for the culprit. You idiot. A police officer. I asked him about the investigation, but there's been no progress. A cold storage warehouse became the scene of a horrible crime this morning. Okura Fishery Cold Storage Warehouse. Or it would have if, you know, Iva, anyone had died. What's in the box? What's in it the box? Like what? What? No, never mind. It's a silicone doll. In the shape of a woman. Huh. Oh, I see. Yeah. Red barrier line wrapped around the scene in the old days. Blah 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 blah. Can Kids you a please crane. Move the crane. Date, please shut up. <laughs> she was not having his shit today. Who took the uh, car? Ota Matsushita. What? What? Oto got into the car and drove off. The security cameras at the convenience store caught the entire incident. Oto's fingerprints were also found on the steering wheel of that car. There is no doubt that it was Ota. But... The stream of the polar bear started around 3 a.m. Correct. About ten minutes later, Ota appeared on screen. Ota stole the car at 10.33 p.m. That makes four and a half hours until he appeared on screen. The station wagon, Ota. Was there anything else found inside the car? There was one thing. What was it? Ota's cell phone. Hmm. The one he purchased two days ago in Akihabara. It slid under the driver's seat. Where's the phone now? Its data is being inspected and evaluated.
I cannot find anything in the vicinity that could be a clue. Me either. Let's check inside the warehouse. Wow, it's cold in here. The air conditioners have stopped. However, the insulation in the walls has kept the room temperature close to what it was this morning. I should finish this investigation before I freeze to death. Well then, you had better get started. <laughs> hey, Kagami. We see each other a lot, don't we? Yeah, wish it were under better circumstances. Too bad you're not a girl. This could be the start of something. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thinking the same thing. Okay. Glad we had that conversation. Uh, any clues? Uh, no, nothing so far. Do you? No, unfortunately I live alone. With a job like this, I don't really get the chance to meet new people. Once this case is wrapped up, how about you and I go to a cabaret club together? Hey, now you're talking. You're buying, right? Sure, I'll expense it. I recorded that conversation. I will be sending it to the boss later. Uh, on second thought, uh, why don't we split it? Aw, lame. <laughs> that must be Ota's blood. That's where he was stabbed and went down. It really does look like Reika from that cabaret club in Nakamaguro. What part of her looks like a metal tube? That's definitely not what I was going for. Any progress on the investigation? I checked this place point by point, but didn't find nothing. Hmm. The equipment. A video camera and laptop. This is what the criminal used to stream. It was bought at thrift stores and pawn shops, blah blah blah. All of these items have been bought from pawn shops and thrift stores. It would be difficult to determine a suspect from them. I have logged into the Wi-Fi in this warehouse. Oki, you're a fishery cook. However... Three a.m. this morning. Iris was lying right here. If Ota hadn't come to save her, it would have been too late. That machine is used to cut ice. We have gathered testimony from the workers regarding it. This has always been in the warehouse, so the suspect did not bring it here. Any fingerprints? Nothing. No fingerprints have been found at the scene at all. At this all? entire warehouse is clean. I see. I guess Oto does wear gloves. The tires of the forklift are clearly frozen to the ground. Huh. It hasn't been moved in a long time. Hmm. Slightly different detail, but same conclusion. Thinking? Nothing. It just seemed noteworthy. Box has nothing in it. This other box has nothing in it. I guess I'll ask him if he's cold. Yeah, some engineer from NRIPS created a jacket lined with heating wires. That keeps me warm. Nice, right? All the cops and inspectors around here are wearing them. That sounds nice. Police officer. Shelves packed with cardboard boxes. I asked the cop on the scene and he said there wasn't anything special in them. There's a dark spot over there. NV. There's something there. 
You should go pick it up. Thanks, Iba. Huh. I recognize this. An Odoroki Man chocolate. You've been collecting them for three years. Each chocolate contains a special sticker inside. Years ago, you started buying them for Mizuki, but eventually, you got hooked on them. Even after Mizuki lost interest, you kept buying them. That's a bittersweet memory. The Odoroki Man chocolate. It's bittersweet as the chocolate. Anyway. Why is this here? Yeah, right? Perhaps we can use it as a clue. Let's investigate further. More importantly, does this have a sticker I don't have yet? <clears throat> oh, it's freezing. Date, we're at our limit. We've examined everything of interest here. Let's go elsewhere. I agree. Sounds good. Alright. Uh, well, let's check if I'm Mizuki. She's definitely... Definitely not going to kill us the second we walk into the door, right? Yeah. The Date Residence, Monday. Hey, Mizuki, could you take a break? I want to ask you something. Holy fuck, this girl is strong. You're... Uh, hey, about Ota and Iris. <laughs> um, where's the officer who dropped you off? Uh, about the fishery? You're, you're mad at me, aren't you? Apologize. Mizuki is still working her muscles. Listen, I get it. I'm really sorry, Mizuki. Yesterday, I went to meet up with the Yakuza gang. The Kumakuras. Remember Mama said Renju had some connection with them? So I went to question them. But of course, I couldn't take a little girl with me. You understand, right? Time for her to punch us in the face. I'm not afraid of any Yakuza's. I'd make their hearts stop beating in three seconds. Girls shouldn't talk like that. That's awfully sexist of you. This is why no one thinks you're attractive. <sighs> I'm attractive? Uh-huh, keep telling yourself that. That's why you haven't had a girlfriend in four years. My girlfriend is a ninja. You know, she's just hiding in the shadows. Sure. So what do you want to ask me anyway? Alright, uh, let's start from the top. Where's the officer? Where's the officer who dropped you off? I told her to go home. I said I would call her to check in. Okay. Why are you disappointed? Did you want to meet her? That's not like that. You wanted to see her boobs? I thought you were more into small boobs, pervert. I like big boobs, too. I suppose you are what they call a tit man. <laughs> I would not help <laughs> Uh, about Ota and Iris. I saw the video. The one at 3 a.m. last night. Ota is amazing. I'm changing my mind about that guy. Ota's out of intensive care. Iris is still... But I know she'll be okay. Iris' surgery will definitely be a success. You stay positive, even if there's no reason to be. It's one of your good qualities, Date. What? What? I believe it. Iris is going to be just fine. <clears throat> About the fishery. <clears throat> Okiura Fishery is a company Grandpa made. I don't think Daddy had anything to do with it, though. Grandpa died 17 years ago. Someone else is running that company now. They aren't family. What kind of person was your grandpa? I never met him. He died before I was born. Duh. But Daddy did tell me stories. Okay. What kind of stories? Back when Grandpa was in Great Grandma's tummy, she was on a passenger ship that got shipwrecked in a storm. She had to have the baby out on the ocean. On the ocean? Damn. 
Yeah. That's pretty extreme. And then, Grandpa was raised by dolphins. Huh? By the time he was ten, he was catching fish with his bare hands. And then Grandpa got up on land and learned language and culture and stuff. And then he decided to start up Okiura Fisheries. Sounds like a tall tale. Yeah, Grandpa was a legend. All the fishermen and sailors respected him. Hmm. That can't be true. But there's a part of me that's thinking... Maybe. After all, Mizuki herself seems superhuman. I believe her grandpa was an incredible man. Maybe just not that incredible. Uh, well, bye. Thanks for talking with me, Mizuki. It was helpful. Was it? I have to continue the investigation, so... Wait, you're leaving me again? I'm coming with you. No. Why? I can't involve you. This might be dangerous. It's okay, I'm strong. You know how strong I am, right? I mean, you are the do you one see who that freaking way? I was before anyone. It was one year ago. She killed a man with her bare hands. I know something strange when Mizuki came home from school. Hey, what happened? Who did this to you? Some kids at school. Five or six of them. They said I was a weirdo because I don't live with my mom and daddy. And they teased me. And I got mad and... I told them to go away and they hit me. Tell me their names. I'll teach the little punks a lesson. Damn, Dante. Dante, wait. <laughs> I was like, no, nope, hold on. Adult intervention will not solve this problem. Mizuki has to deal with this problem herself. Mizuki, come on. It's time to train. What? I'm gonna teach you how to kick their asses. We're starting right now. I was like, I don't know if this is in the good parenting books, but okay, here we go. And then they had a training montage. She came back a week later. I killed all of them. Uh, uh, good job. Why the shrine? The shrine is the perfect place for special training. It is. So it's on the manga. Better when you train in quiet, serene places like this. Sure, whatever. First, I am going to teach you four secrets to becoming stronger. Follow these four rules, and you will acquire power beyond your wildest dreams. Okay. Date, are you playing a character or something? <laughs> I'm not Date. While we're in training, I am master. Yes. Yes, he is. Also gross. Uh, oh, we're doing this. Okay. Um, from the top going clockwise? Like, when you get into a fight, aim for the heart? No, it's the opposite. You must kill your own heart, Mizuki. What do you mean? If you are going to fight, you must suppress any mercy or emotional attachment. If you have even a mote of sympathy within you, it will be impossible to fight to your potential. Do not think of your opponent as a man. Think of them as a target. A punching bag or a board. Damn. Just a punching bag. Huh. That's pretty fucking metal. Uh, being quick to act is crucial. Mizuki, do you know how <clears throat> to win any fight against any opponent? Um, don't get in a fight in the first place? That is a respectable answer. But no, the way to win any fight is this. Hit them first, and hit them hard enough to finish them. I kinda get it, but... Of course, I'm not saying that's how you should behave. But thinking about this will make a big difference in a real fight. Yeah, okay, I get it, but... Seriously, Date, are you, like, acting or something? <laughs> Not Date, Master. Yes, yes he is. Your everyday life is of dire importance. What? Why? 
<laughs> the best training you could ever have is to be mindful during your everyday life. Diet and exercise form a strong body. And if you are always maturing intellectually and emotionally, you will always be able to anticipate your enemy's first move. I get it. But you're so messy. Does that mean you can't fight? <laughs> Hark. The blowing of the wind through the trees. <laughs> you can't just say something cool to avoid my question. <laughs> Mental preparation is important. In a fight, you must <clears throat> first be victorious in your mind. <clears throat> Like thinking I'm not gonna lose? Exactly. I do the same mental preparation before going to a strip club. What? Before I go in, if I tell <laughs> myself face. that they're all out of my league, then they will be. The mental fight has begun the moment I put my hand on the door. Yeah, I see. Actually, no. That's stupid. Thank you. Anyway, practice these four truths. And you will get stronger. This sounds like a scam. Believe in me. If you do as I say, you'll be thanking me in time. Are you sure? Right, how about we do a baseline test? Show me what you've got. Huh? How? Well, let's see. How about you throw a punch? I can guess your strength from that. If you say so, I'll give it a shot. But she punches you so hard in the liver, you have to go to the hospital? First, close your eyes and concentrate. Like this? Exactly. Then, punch forward! <laughs> huh? How is that? Um, um you don't have to be nice. I know I'm weak. <laughs> I was hey, like, by the what? way, did you swing back at those bullies? No, I didn't do anything. There were a bunch of them. I didn't think I could. I see. She doesn't know her own strength. I suppose not. <laughs> Mizuki, let's just say I think you should be more confident in yourself. Really? But never ever strike your master. <laughs> Please don't Death hit me. It's a must. <laughs> Dot says like, I will die. Please don't hit me. I beg you. <laughs> uh, nice little bit of levity in this yeah, story. You're right. In fact, you're so strong you scare me sometimes. Well then? No, I can't take you with me. Why not? Because is that why her yellow jacket I took reminds me of Kill Bill? For you. I promised Renju I can't put you in danger. That's not fair. Bringing up daddy. Iris and Ota feel the same way. They don't want you hurt either. You have to understand, Mizuki. If I need your help, I'll let you know when the time comes. Really? Yes. Promise? I promise. Let's go, Lila. And this girl becomes an adult and like a police officer or something. She, she, she really kicks some ass. The diner, even though no one's there. Oh no, right, she went there to pick up stuff for uh, Ota. Well, it's Interceptor. I'm saving Sejima for last. But maybe nothing happens in this timeline because Iris didn't die? Um, uh, who might you be? It's me, Konami Date. We met yesterday. I gave you my card. I was also oh. passed out on the floor of so your diner. how can I help you? Um... Uh, what are you looking at? Oh, this? As Mayumi spoke, she turned the photo toward me. This is a family photo from when Ota was still small. I wanted to look at it again. <sighs> I'm 
a horrible mother. I've always caused trouble for my husband and Oda. They've helped me so many times. I am such a burden. But they were always smiling. They were so kind. I remember a gift they gave me one Mother's Day. They knew how much I liked floral patterns. So they gave me this apron and a kitchen knife. Oh, I was so happy. I was crying and smiling, and that's what this photo is from. It's kind of embarrassing, but isn't it such a nice photo? Yes, that's very nice, Mayumi. Does that guy not have a face? Do not ask that. Uh, you done packing? Packing? What are you talking about? I thought you came here to pack some of Ota's things for his hospital stay. Ota? At the hospital? Mm -hmm. My boy's fine. You shouldn't say things like that to a mother. She's definitely got some issues with the memory and stuff. Do you remember last night? Last night? What time? Before 10 p.m. Oh, I was already asleep by 10. You were sleeping? That can't be. Ota. You left the diner to chase after Ota and Iris. I saw the whole thing with my own left eye. Left eye? Not both your eyes? Uh, well... Anyway, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't go anywhere last night. I was asleep. I was dreaming. Dreaming? Yes. A very nostalgic dream. It was when my son had just started elementary school. I had Oda run an errand for me. And he was taking so long, and I was waiting. My husband said it was nothing to worry about, but I couldn't take it anymore and went to look for him. I found him at a traffic signal, crying. He said he couldn't come home because the signal was still red. But it was one of those crossing signals you have to push. <laughs> that boy didn't even notice it. He just stood in front of that red light. So stubborn. So stupidly honest. Ah, that's my Oda. He was so cute. I couldn't help it. About the chocolate? Just to be sure, I decided to ask Mayumi about the Odorokimon chocolate I found at the warehouse. <coughs> I took it out of my pocket. Do you sure. know anything about this chocolate? Oh, you like Odorokimon? Yes, actually. I was hooked on them at one point. My Ota loves them too. When he was younger, he used to collect all the stickers. He was the best at it. <sighs> I don't want to ask this. Oh, who knows? Date, I did some research on her husband, Ota's father. Here we go. His name is Matsushita. Takaro. He died of myocardial infarction five years ago. What? What is going on here? Mayumi is Date, I um, noticed something. Can you help <clears throat> Mayumi with the thermal imaging turned on? Thermal imaging? Uh, sure. <laughs> Oh. Do you see it? Part of her brain is blue. That might be due to low blood flow in that part of the brain. Which means... Mayumi has an illness. I have checked her hospital records. For the past six years, Mayumi has been suffering from dementia. Mm-hmm. Dementia? Symptoms vary considerably, 
but Mayumi appears to be afflicted by memory loss. She seems to be missing memories. I see. So that's where those weird comments are coming from. Can she run a diner like that? It isn't running. What do you mean? Matsushita Diner has been closed for eight years. Matsushita Diner is near the Kawasaki <clears throat> District. Mm -hmm. It is not technically within the restricted area. However, after the chemical plant explosion, the number of potential customers must have dropped considerably. Before the accident, this diner managed quite well due to its proximity to Bloom Park. Patrons from Bloom Park would often eat here, being the cheaper option. Mm. But Bloom Park closed eight years ago. The customers stopped coming, and then, naturally... Does Mayumi not notice that the store is closed? I do not think so. Because of the dementia? Yes. I can't believe it. Well, is that all? I have to start preparing for the dinner shift. That's heartbreaking. Mayumi stood and went to the kitchen. Date, let's go. It's better that you leave things be. Mm -hmm. You're right. <coughs> okay. Well, let's go to the let's go to the hospital. That sounds like a good idea. Mm -hmm. Central Hospital. He told me. Are you okay? Date. The nurse told me you were here. Yes, just resting. Iris's surgery was successful. Oh, they told good. me she would be fine. After I heard that, a weight left my shoulders and I just collapsed. It seems that she passed out and was brought here. Hmm. Yeah, the nurse told me. But I'm fine now. I feel much better. Uh, let's not go asking about alibis first thing, yes? She... Iris lost her left eye. Mm -hmm. They haven't found it yet. If the optic nerve and blood vessels are intact, they told me they might be able to restore it. But I'm thankful she's alive. When I was young, I... I lost someone very important to me. Monica Ui, my best friend. One of the only friends I had. While I was waiting for news from Iris's surgery, I... I started thinking about Monica. Hold that thought. <laughs> Person. Um... The appendix? I need the original four victims. I don't think I'm going to find it. Um, all right, that's fine. And I felt like I was going to lose my mind. That must have been very painful. Yes. Um, about Ota? I am so thankful for Ota. No, words don't even do it justice. Ota saved Iris, didn't he? Mm-hmm. I heard the police talking about it. If Oda didn't go to the warehouse that night, Iris would be dead. I really. But if we hadn't gotten in time, 
Him it's and Iris would that. both be dead. There isn't a bigger word for thank you. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I have to ask this. Hitomi, what were you doing around 3 a.m. today? I don't mean anything by it. I'm just doing my job. I was sleeping at home. The police came and picked me up around 4 a.m. That's when I heard about all this. Her testimony matches what was in the investigation material. The cops came to pick her up around 4? Correct. Pretty quick. How long does it take to get from Hitomi's house to the warehouse? 20 to 25 minutes by car. And the polar bear ran out of the warehouse at around 3.15? Correct. If you're fast, you can just make it. Do you suspect Hitomi? Not necessarily, but... Hmm. Uh, do you know anything about Iris and So? So, Sejima? The politician? Yes. We believe they might know each other. I don't think so. Okay. About Ota again? Oda was actually one of my students. I was oh, a yeah, teacher right. in elementary school. Even back then, he had such a strong sense of justice. Not that I'm one to say, but I believe he grew up to be quite an amazing young man. He risked his own life to save someone else. <laughs> his mother must have raised him well. Uh, the less said about that, the better. Well, goodbye. Sorry for asking you so many questions at a time like this. No, it's fine. I should go. I kind of wanted to talk to Ota, but it's fine. Let's head to the Sejima residence. A new location has been opened. Well, I guess the hospital is technically new, too. No, that's where we first met up with Mizuki? No, she stuck, snuck into our car after I left the headquarters. Eh, anyway, Sejima residence. How did you get in? Hopped over the fence. <clears throat> That's trespassing, you know. My baseball landed in your backyard. I was just trying to get it back. <laughs> <clears throat> So, uh, do you know Iris? I don't. Who is that? I showed him the picture of Iris I had. This girl. Do you recall seeing her? No, I've never seen her. I detect no noticeable rise in So's body temperature. But he's a politician. a politician. Lying is his job. Yeah. Well, true. So, where were you at 3 a.m.? Here. Sleeping, of course. Why? What happened? Did you not see the news? No. I've been reading a book. I don't know what happened, but whatever it was, I had nothing to do with it. About your connections with the Kumakuras. I told you yesterday. My relationship with them is perfectly legitimate. Hey, Aiba. You were still in the middle of the story about So selling and buying the Kawasaki land. Oh, we can continue that later. Do you know Iris? No, it's this girl. I showed him the picture of Iris. Cute. What was that? Uh, nothing. You just said cute, didn't you? I did not. You did. Did not. Did. I said shoot. Why would you say shoot? Look, I said I don't know her, alright? Okay. So about his alibi? Congressman Sejima was at home all Friday and Saturday. How about from last night until this morning? He was in his bedroom, resting. Can you prove that? My word should be enough. 
Iba, are there any security cameras in the mansion? There are several. But for some reason, they are all powered off. There is no image data for the past few days. Really? Hmm. That's too suspicious to ignore. Are you finished here? I'm just getting started. You won't get anything, no matter what you ask. So, Sejima has nothing to do with your case. It's my job to decide that, not yours. <sighs> okay. I didn't want to get rough. But if I need to, I'll feed you to the koi. I'd like to see you try. Date, he's not all talk. What? Check his body. Um, uh, the X-ray. That is 100% a gun. A handgun. It is, of course, real and loaded. So you're carrying, huh? What are you talking about? Don't act dumb. I should have you arrested for firearm violation. I don't know what you're talking about. The gun you have on you. I don't have a gun. I know that you do. You got a way to prove it? I could search you. Oh yeah? How? You need a warrant for that. <sighs> are you finished? If you are done here, I'd like to ask you to leave. Date, I don't believe we can accomplish anything further here. It's better for us to return to HQ. This is why I hate politicians. <laughs> Abyss HQ. Before we reach HQ, let's summarize our investigation so far. Oh, okay. <clears throat> About Mayumi. Mayumi is suffering from dementia. If Mayumi followed Ota and Iris, it is highly likely that she saw the person in the polar bear costume. But... She might not remember. Correct. What about Mizuki? Mizuki did not have any new information about Okiura Fishery. Currently, it seems there is nothing linking that company to Renju. Just the name. Hmm. <laughs> Still, something's not right. About so. There is only circumstantial evidence linking So Sejima to the new Cyclops serial killings. Also, if anyone can hear that construction in the background, I apologize. I can't do anything about it. It's apparently something the apartment complex is doing. Without any freaking warning, but moving on. I agree, but there has to be more to it. The Kumakuras had connections to both victims. So has a connection to the Kumakuras. There's a common link there. They have to be involved somehow. So also might have connections to Iris. Because So appeared in Iris's Somnium? Yeah. I am more interested in the hired guns that So uses as bodyguards. I did some research and discovered that Mr. Sejima hires substantial security. If all of his security staff are this heavily armed, Yakuza gangs pale in comparison. <clears throat> so trying to start trouble? You clearly never know, met Dojima. But there is definitely more than he is letting on. Any other info? There is an important piece of news. What is it? 
The Odoroki Man chocolate found at the warehouse. Fingerprints were found on it. Whose? Mayumi Matsushita's. Hmm. What? Mayumi bought the chocolate at the convenience store 812 on Koshu. This was captured on security footage. 812 stores are commonly called eights. Eight is not far from the Famisto where Ota stole the station wagon. Hold on a second. I'm having trouble keeping the facts straight. Allow me to summarize. Please do. Please. The chocolate was purchased yesterday at 10.33 p.m. That's the same time Ota stole that car. Correct. What conclusions can we draw from that? Unknown. All that is known for certain is that Mayumi bought the chocolate at an 8 store last night. And that same chocolate somehow ended up in the warehouse. Did she go there and drop it? It is possible. Well... Hmm? Sorry to interrupt your brainstorming, but there's a call from the boss. Boss. Connect me. Date, did you hear that Iris's operation is over? I yeah, did. I heard about it at the hospital. She made it, right? Yes, but she's still unconscious. She's currently in the ICU. No visitors allowed. All right. Ota, however, seems like he can talk now. He's out of treatment? Yeah, he's in a general ward now. Got it. I'll head over. I'll meet you there. Will you now, boss? Hmm. So Mayumi did end up going to the diner. But what does that mean? How are you feeling, Ota? <clears throat> you know, surprisingly, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm still under anesthesia, so I don't have any pain. All right, that's good. Ota, I'm sorry to I'm put sure this that's... on you right after your surgery, but can you talk to us for a minute? Sure to change here in a few hours. Boss got right to business after introducing herself. I don't know why, but Ota seemed almost happy to answer. It's because she has boobs. Maybe it's the drugs. Maybe it's the high from surviving a life or death situation. Or maybe it was because he saved Iris. Yeah, sure. Hey, about that walk that hit me in the oh, face. Yeah. You hit me over the head with that walk, didn't you? Oh, uh, that was... I thought I needed to protect Tessa, so... Isn't there something you want to say to me? Sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. But you're not gonna get a second chance. I won't do it again. I swear on Ganesha. You should swear to a god that's a little closer, kid. Mm -hmm. Uh, so who stabbed you? Were you watching the stream? A big polar bear. Yes, I'm talking about who was inside. Did you see them? No. Whoever Excuse it was me. was probably wearing that costume to hide their identity. Um, did you hear about Iris? Her surgery was successful, right? Yeah, thanks to you. If you weren't there, Iris would have been in real trouble. I'm Tessa's biggest fan. Any fan would have done what I did. It's nothing special. It's as normal as garlic and ramen. What? I think that depends on preference. Yeah. Honestly, I'm a little bit scared of my new power. When I locked eyes with that polar bear, I saw him start shaking. He saw how strong I was and got scared, no doubt. And then he stabbed you in the gut. Ota's body temperature is rising. He's embellishing his story quite a bit. I think we can let that go today. 
Yeah. Yeah, you're right. He saved someone. Let him let him pretend to be the hero of justice. Uh, about that thing. That's. <sighs> Sorry, I promised that I wouldn't tell anyone. Then I'll tell Iris about your fake accounts. You know what happens after that, right? Everything you built up here is gonna come crashing down. <sighs> but I can't tell you. Why not? Calm down and think about it. The criminal who attacked Iris is still out there. Iris might have seen the criminal's face. Whoever did this might come back to kill her. No. If you want to protect her, the fastest way is for us to catch this guy. But to do that, I need information. Okay. About chocolate. Does this jog your memory? Oh, that. What? Do you know something about it? You don't have to show me the thermograph. It's written all over his face. Absolutely. What happened after you left the diner? You mean after... hitting you with the walk? Yes. I took Tessa in the van and we ran away. I drove for a while, then we decided to take a breather. I parked the car at Femisto on Koshu. I told Tessa I was gonna go in and buy something to drink. I got out of the car, and I went inside. But then, I heard Tessa screaming. Ota, help! I ran out of the store as fast as I could. But the car was driving away! I looked around, and I saw there was a car with its engine still on, and... The station wagon, right? Yeah. Before I even realized what I was doing, I was behind the steering wheel. I didn't mean to steal it. I just needed to borrow it. The time was 10.33 p.m. I feel now like we know these are extenuating the circumstances. Could probably let it go. I took the car, then drove out onto Koshu, but I couldn't find the van anywhere. I searched for what felt like hours. You didn't contact the police. I thought after I hit you. You shouldn't have worried about that. But that's all that I was thinking at the time. I thought that if I called the cops, they'd arrest me. I wasn't thinking clearly. I was panicking. He makes some of the weirdest and faces. That's why I didn't realize it right away. Realize what? My phone. I left my new phone in the car. Why is that so important? Because the phone had GPS on it. If I looked it up, I would find the location of the van. Smart. So, I drove as fast as I could to an internet cafe and looked it up. That's when I found out my new phone was at a warehouse near the water. You know the rest. Hmm. That explains why it took so long. After running into the warehouse... Did you see me turn off the saw? Yeah, but everything after that was off-screen. What happened? I honestly don't remember much. My mind went blank. I remember rushing the bear, and I think I was fighting him for a while. And we got tangled up, and then before I knew it, he got me in the stomach with a knife. Just to make absolutely certain, you didn't see who was in the suit? No, I didn't. Voice? Body type? Nothing. Sorry. Anything at all you can remember? I'm sorry, I told you everything. I can't think of anything else. Are you sure? Yes. Date, look. Oh, come on. After all this, what is he trying to hide? It was Tessa and that polar bear. Wait. <laughs> Remember when I told you about my day Saturday? I kind of lied a little. What did you lie about? When I got to Sunfish Pocket, I saw a sign that said the place was all rented out. Mm -hmm. That part is true. But after that, I said I went home, but I didn't. 
I was hanging out in Akihabara for a few hours. Is that when you bought your new phone? Yeah. Why did you hide that? Because... something happened after. This must have been about 8.50. I was going to cross the intersection in Akiba, and I saw Mr. Okiura's car at the light. But when I got close, I saw Tessa driving it. Iris was driving it? Hmm. Whoa! You surprised me! I'm more surprised than you are! Is something wrong? What do you mean? Hey, Tessa, do you have a license? Oh, yeah, of course, of course I, do. I do! Not have one. Oh, okay. You don't have a license? Shh! Mr. Okiura asked me to run an errand. I had to borrow his car. Please don't tell anyone. Okay. You promise? Anything for you. After that, the light turned green and she drove off. Was Iris the only one in the car? Yeah, it was just her. Mm -hmm. That's what I meant by that thing. An idle driving without a license is a huge deal. So I... Kept quiet. Saturday at 6.15 p.m., Ota saw Iris and Renju together. Mm -hmm. They were leaving the Sunfish Pocket Building. Two and a half hours later, Ota witnessed Iris driving Renju's car. What are your thoughts? This is sounding really bad for Iris. But consider the current circumstances. Iris had her left eye taken out by a criminal who is possibly the new Cyclops killer. And if Ota had not reached her in time, she would have been killed. What is going on here? Date. That's what Ota I'd like to know. Strange. I advise caution. What do you mean? Caution achieved. I don't believe it. He's holding a knife. Why does he have that? In any case, you know what you have to do now. I know. Let me go! Let me go! What the hell do you think you're doing? Shut up! Just let me go! Sleeping gas. Now you've done it. I can't question him like this. But you can still get information. Ooh! Inside his head. This is taking a turn I don't know if I was ready for. <laughs> Dante, as you know, the limit is six minutes. Please do not go over it. Won't be a problem. But are you sure this is okay? Ota just came out of surgery. If anything happens, I'll take responsibility. But... It's fine. Just get it done. Good enough for me. <laughs> Fury's like, okay, let's do this. Man, what, what could this, what could even be in this dream? I'm terrified to find out.
box. Can you please take me with you? As long as I have Wi-Fi, I don't need anything else. Sorry, we can't have pets. Hm. Cold-hearted old man. Oh. It's this thing Is this again. A cold storage warehouse? Seems to be. Not a manga cafe? Or an otaku shop? No, but a warehouse is a commonly used location in live-action dramas. You know a lot. Predicting this, I did some research on Ota's taste. I see. By the way, are you smaller? Either that, or everything else is bigger. Interesting. Hey, that's... Iris is about to be... Stop right there! The heavens call, the earth cries out, the crowds roar! All calling on me to strike back against evil! Hold on, Tessa! I will save you! Yeah! I will protect Tessa! Is this from the stream we saw earlier? <laughs> this is Ota's memory of it. It appears to be a bit exaggerated. A bit. All right, let's help reproduce the memory. Somnium scan, activate. Mental lock number one. Lock number two. Number three, the bear. Number four, Ota himself. Relive Ota's memories. Reproduce the fiery battle between Ota and the polar bear. Save Iris, save the world. Curse you, polar bear! I will vanquish you! But if I rush in, I'll slip on the ice and fall! Like this. Why the why the hint typos? Damn it! If I go in like that, I'll have nothing to show for it. All of it amounts to nothing. What will I do? I don't know what that was exactly, but the knowledge you gained might be useful. I did not want to use my local storage space for this. <laughs> Alright. Charge forward, secure the route. But will we be able to find out exactly what happened in this warehouse? Hopefully, what actually happened in this warehouse? You'll just have to find out next time on Let's Play I of the Somnium Files. Until then, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And if you do subscribe, ring that little bell for notifications on all my uploads. And in the description down below, as well as on screen now, are links to my Twitch and Twitter accounts. So be sure to follow those for all that streaming goodness. <sighs> this game's getting weird. Sorry, Jamata.